Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of the appeal process, where it's at, um, what's been docketed, and also where we share the highs and lows of waiting on the appeal and the Chicago trial together. I want to look at an update with you regarding Joycelyn Savage and the video that was just put out um, as of recent, I'd say about maybe five days ago, about a week ago. And I want to get your opinion about how they're talking and putting her on as a victim, putting her on as a victim of human trafficking, of R. Kelly, you know, while he's behind bars. I want you to listen to this video so we can get your point of view. So this is the Isaiah factor on um, Soul Fox Houston. Uncensored. And welcome back to the second half hour of the factor on Censored. We're seeing the effects of domestic violence play out in real time. Jocelyn Savage is reportedly engaged to R. Kelly. The singer recently was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison for sex trafficking and racketeering. And for years, he's also been accused of sexually abusing women and young girls. Despite all of this, Savage says she's sticking beside him. Now, last month, she wrote a letter to the judge asking for leniency in his case and claiming she's not a victim, writing, quote, my relationship with Robert is amazing. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. We have a very special connection and are very deeply in love. I still support Robert to this day because I love him and will always be here to support him, end quote. You might would she stay. Well, it's hard for victims to kick their abuse to this day because I love him and will always be here to support him. That right there has made many people angry. It has pissed people off that he still has love outside of what they're trying to do to break his spirit. You know, this is the woman who he is engaged to. This is the woman who was part of the, the last thing that Robert Sylvester Kelly remembers in the free world. And they're trying to seduce and romanticize the relationship as that of a human traffic um, situation. Do you guys feel that Joycelyn Savage was a human trafficked or domestic violenced against individual because she's still showing him love? How can that be? How can someone turn love into something that is narcissistic? Oh, you love him because you don't know that you're abused. At what point do we begin to make choices and decisions for ourselves however we choose to? If he's never been uh, disrespectful to her, if he's never harmed her in any way, who is this system to tell us that we cannot choose to love Robert Sylvester Kelly? That is bullying. That is, uh, 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 that is injustice and bullying. Let's finish listening. Um, I can go on and on with this one because I feel that the world is just trying to take everybody's perspectives and thoughts and mind frames and putting them in a little tiny tinker box. Like, wow. End quote. You might be wondering if he was so horrible to her, why would she stay? Well, it's hard for victims to kick their abusers out and to the curb. Now, if it's hard to do that, if she's been domestic against, I believe that she would have the ability to want to leave, period, point blank. There's nothing that would be said, okay, but uh, you're going to have someone else come on and talk about the analysis behind um, Joycelyn. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You're talking about the, the, in, the, uh, the way that she is behaving as far as wanting love, wanting to express love. But somehow or another, that's wrong. 
but you're going to have this woman come on and analyze someone who can speak for herself. She can speak for herself. If she wanted to say what she wants, I think she's so like in the background, not trying to rock the boat, not trying to be, you know, and they're looking at that, not rocking the boat as a way of saying he's manipulating her from the inside. That's why she, why isn't she speaking for herself? Joycelyn is the only one that knows that the media can change and social media can turn and flip everything around. They went all the way back to the letter that she literally wrote to the judge trying to ask for leniency on sentencing because number one, the sentencing was way too harsh. So that would be everyone. So everyone's manipulated and bamboozled and we don't know what we have a right to believe. <sighs> Many people, Allie, are shaking and scratching their heads as a result of the... Now this lady, Allie, looks so confusing. She looks like she's clueless. She looks like they put her ca a Caucasian face on to analyze an African-American woman who she has no idea what trauma she's gone through or anything, but she's the one that's taken Joycelyn's place when Joycelyn should be in that seat, analyzing her love for Robert Sylvester Kelly and if she is domestic against, if she is trafficked against. Wow, this world is a trip, man. And I'm watching everything go down as it does. This announcement that came from Jocelyn Savage, who was identified as an R. Kelly victim uh, in his federal trial and his trial in, in New York. And now. She yeah, he was she was pointed out by people who are so busy in R. Kelly's life until they just wanted to, cru to, to, to just crucify this man and tell someone who's saying she's in love with him telling her you're not in love and we're going to continue now who is the one that is manipulating the mind to get what it is they want is it the media or is it r kelly who is it people help me make logic to this she's saying she is his fiance and he treated her well and she had the best life. No one's ever treated her better. And people are trying to wrap their heads around that. And wow. Wrap your heads around what? Wrap your heads around the fact that she has an emotional feeling towards this man? Wrap your head around what? You took a letter that she wrote to a judge. She didn't even incorporate that letter to send to you to put out to mass media. You went in there and you got that information because it was public knowledge and you're creating a storyline for what you're speaking of about the situation. How brutal, how brutal of an attack. That's just not uncommon for someone who's been a victim, right? Right. So I think in recent times, we have seen kind of the dynamics of domestic and sexual violence play out in in public settings through through the court system and this is yet again another one that's a lie they're not seeing anything play out they're creating the storyline they're creating the narrative people listen they are putting in our minds what they want us to believe that's it nothing is playing out other than their their uh, prosecutorial concepts of how they can win the case by any means necessary. And we have to look out for our young men and the way that they approach relationships and dating and even the people that they meet. Be very, very leery of how people come into your lives. Remember the day, remember the moon phase, remember the month, remember the, the what the weather was like, because all of that is going to make sense when it no longer makes sense. Because everyone will show you who they are when you meet them. So I'm really frustrated and I'm really upset at this, at this uh, article here, this video here, Joycelyn Savage reveals engagement to R. Kelly. Well, what is wrong with that?
What is wrong with that? One of those instances where we are seeing um, the manipulation, the control, and kind of the aftermath of... While the manipulation and control of an individual who is incarcerated behind bars has been there for three years, and you mean to tell me that this is the aftermath, that she still loves him. Oh, you're not supposed to continue to love this man. We have made him a monster in your mind and you fail to realize it. I think it's oppositional defiant disorder. Oh, how about that, America? How about she's doing this because she really loves him and it's not oppositional defiant disorder. It's just that she's not buying into the hype of the lies in which people tell regarding how she feels emotionally about the man she cares about. Come on with it. Come on with it, people. This literally makes no sense. Of, of an individual experiencing a traumatic event in their life. And when you look at a situation like this. The traumatic event is, I guess, her and Azriel being with a superstar. And because they did not steal his money because they did not lie on him they're the outcast well not Azriel, but she's the outcast jocelyn is the out outcast how did oh my God. it's the old school term that comes to mind when people say oh she's been brainwashed so what brainwashing is what is happening right now that's why they use the term she's been brainwashed she's been brainwashed because they cannot un do what they want her to realize and understand she's standing her ground she is not being bullied by the social media the 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 clearance that mr robert sylvester kelly was talking about during the time of the gail king interview social media has a lot of power and this is what he meant when he said that social media was showing their power and this is what's happening Joycelyn has nothing to do with what this woman is talking about for uh, looking at um, individuals who has been domestic violence against. No, they're putting her and grouping her in a, in a group of those individuals who they feel she resembles to their case studies. Wow, how dare you. Actually happens to a victim who is still in love publicly with the person who allegedly well now convicted of abusing allegedly exactly now convicted because it was pushed forth it was something that was motivated intentionally by the me too movement which is a group of individuals that we hear nothing about what they're doing to help the brown and black girls of america but yet they're saying that she don't have a mind of her own. Joyce Lynn is a grown woman. She doesn't have a mind of her own. I wish she would just get on and just show them, but why should she have to? Nobody has to show and prove anything. They just have to know. They just have to know. So Joyce Lynn, I think you're doing a great job because these people are coming to crucify you because you love this man. Mm. Because you love this man. Absolutely. So I think we see um, survivors have just a wide range of, of reaction, normal, common trauma reactions, expressions of trauma after after this event. And manipulation is one of them, right? Where we who's manipulating? Who's manipulating the fact that she's saying that she loves this man? And this woman is from a Houston's a Houston uh, woman's center, a shelter, a homeless shelter. This is totally different. These women were not homeless. They were at the top of the line filet mignon of the superstar status industry. As last, we remember R. Kelly being in the free world. He was taking care of his women. So I don't know what she's trying to downgrade or downplay. Our cultural relationship with, with you know, a woman and her man. We do have perpetrators, individuals who choose violence, um, utilize this manipulation and this control to craft a situation in which they benefit from, in which- She's not making any sense. What is he benefiting from for being with Joycelyn? 
There's nothing that, what is he benefiting from other than the fact that he needs, everyone needs love. So even them thinking, even prosecution and, you know, all the convictions and everything and the sentencing and all that, regardless of what, even uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame is a Disney movie that this monster was such a monster only because he didn't know how to live in a world full of individuals who think and feel and and prescribe themselves the same way all the time. So you mean to tell me that when Belle falls, I think it's Belle, when she falls in love with the monster, the whole community feels like he's abusing her. He's taking advantage of her. He's disrespecting her. Why? Because a monster is not supposed to love. But how dare anyone call anyone a monster when in actuality there is no proof that this man has done all these things that miraculously comes forth at the same exact time in 2019 and now the whole world is supposed to believe it. A bunch of bull, man, a bunch of bull. Which they maintain that power and control. And this looks like, again, kind of another instant where you can see um, the confusing situation. You can see those moments. Yeah, you're creating the confusing situation. This homeless woman is watching homeless individuals interact with each other. When they're coming off of drugs, when they're coming off of alcohol, when they're coming out of, addic of addiction, when they're coming out of poverty, when they're coming out of, of the storm, and you're trying to relate that to a superstar status of a multi-billionaire, the nerve. Moments of, you know, like you said, the head scratching and, and the, the brainwashing is really that manipulation of a brainwashing is what she's doing now. Manipulating is what she's doing now. That's the reason why she's using the terminology. Pay attention, people. Flip the script and you will see the devil in the details. You will literally hear it. You will see it. You will sense it. You will feel it. And it is there. Perpetrator. Um, what really happened and what is taking place is, is hard for us to know in this moment. Um, oh, but, but you know everything. You know that he is a monster. You know that she has been manipulated by this monster. You know that he is manipulating her through the mental frames of the walls of a prison all the way in New York City and all the way in Chicago. And and uh, <laughs> and now you're saying that there's something that you can't see. Oh, are you doing the same thing you're blaming R. Kelly for doing subliminally? speaking things into existence from musical content? <laughs> Are you really and truly speaking these words on a interview on national TV to sway the masses? Wow. Also, is it uncommon for a survivor to share their story and then um, there either be the shame or the public knowledge of that being shared, that that story may um, shift and, and change in the way that it is. Listen to her trying to justify the other people, the other 48 women who sat up there and lied on him on the stand and on the docuseries. She's trying to um, make it logical right now. But here's what I want everyone to hear me say clearly. You know, it's our right to believe what we choose. It's our right to believe that we are capable of making conscious, aware decisions. These are, these are areas of fact and life factors that causes us to second doubt ourselves. Well, maybe they're saying the truth. Maybe this is something that's really going on. Why? Why would this even be necessary to put on social media in order to get people to communicate about? If the woman loves the man, let her love the man, right? Tell me that I'm being logical here. Am I being logical to you? Am I making sense? Because, I mean, if I'm just talking gibberish and a foreign language that nobody understands, I will... I will say good night tonight, but this makes no sense to me.
is told um, for their own self-protection, for, for them to have power over that. Now, it's interesting to see. How does a man with no air to breathe have power over a person? How? He has to tell her, you know, when he is going to call just so that they could talk. You know, I mean, these are things that happen, man, in the system of justice. And this is so, they're trying to break his spirit. They're trying to uh, um, insinuate that he has no love out here. They're trying to manipulate and mastermind. And this is how they are blaming him for the very things that they are doing to him. Sad. Like how this has shifted so dramatically but again not something that that we see uncommon in survivors especially associated with trafficking now if you're now how is he trafficking her when she lived with him she's living with him she can choose to go home she can choose to she can choose to do all this she talked to her parents she told her parents this stuff that they were saying about her is not correct but they have to place they have to put into the mindsets of the masses the 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 immediacy of you have to listen to this this man has abused this woman mentally to where she is an invalid to where she can't think breathe or eat without his knowledge without his opportunity or without his saying so I mean, wow. Dealing with a person like Jocelyn Savage, even if she says, let's grant her this, R. Kelly didn't harm her. But she sees what R. Kelly was guilty of. and, and, and The guilt. The guilty of. But he says he didn't do this to all these people. Where are the bruises? Where are the pictures? Where are the photos when it happened? Where are the police reports? Where are the abortion records? Where are the, the, the videos, the uh, countless and countless and countless and countless videos? Where are they? This man is, you, sh you should be ashamed of yourself. Went to prison for. Mm -hmm. Why does that not account or to matter to her who wants to come out publicly and say, I'm engaged to this wonderful guy when, you know, the, the facts are totally different from what she is saying? because you did not sway her. That's why, Isaiah, you did not sway her. So because you did not sway her, you're pissed. Cause it's like, what does she have that we were unable to grab in her mind and take away from her that other women were able to jump on board and do? Hmm, uncensored, huh? Right, so we often see that with perpetrators that as, um their crimes as their violence is exposed that there are a lot of people that are like oh well he was a really likable individual or he was involved in xyz in the community but that goes back to that manipulation that that he was involved so it was actively happening but these women were also involved these parents were also involved you know having children as a wife, Andrea was actively involved. When all was good, everything was good. But the minute it turned, all hell broke loose. It's not just the survivors being manipulated. It is society as a whole. Uh, so uh, that, that is a lie because I'm not going to be manipulated by these subliminal attacks that they're putting into our mindset. Look at some of the people who really and truly believe that he is guilty. Look at some of their channels and listen to the sadistic way that they are glorifying that this man did all this stuff with no evidence. Crucifixion. That's, that's mass manipulation, essentially. Absolutely. So I think we have this, but also the the 
minimization is something that is is normal for survivors to do right like they have to sit in this story in in their survivorship and and we often see that minimization because of the kind of psychological manipulation on the on the part of the perpetrator really that like oh well you know i did it to them but um, I would never do something like that to you. Or don't you remember? Again, she's looking at it from a perspective of a, however many, what, what the statistics are of the homeless women, the culture in which they come from, the background in which they come from into her homeless shelter. She's looking at those women who have been financially abused, emotionally abused, and she's clumping Joycelyn in with those women. And that is so unfair. What is your name? Um, oh goodness, I can't find her name, but that's totally unfair in this interview. You guys didn't give Joycelyn an ounce of respect. When I did X, Y, Z, nice, it is, it is not, we don't use kind of this cycle of violence again in the like honeymoon phase and, and, and those things commonly, but that is what's happening is the, sorry, I'm never going to do this again. Or I was a really great person. What did he do to her? What did he do to Joycelyn? They just cannot believe that she was able to not be bamboozled and manipulated by the lies of society and mass media. They're really, really upset. And just because someone is great to one person does not mean that they have been horrible to other people in their life. Okay, just because someone has been great to someone doesn't mean that they haven't been horrible to other people. What about people who are doing things like this interviewer here, disrespecting and discrediting and dehumanizing R. Kelly because everyone is trying to get people in society to believe that he did everything that he said he was convicted of. But I don't see her talking about any other person. I don't see her talking about the Playboy Bunny mansion guy or the... The guy that just, you know, you know, you're only speaking of the R. Kelly incident that everyone had a part to say in that convicted a person and took his life away. Wow. So this is how we do it now. This is how it's done. So I'm just sharing this with you so you can see what's really going on when R. Kelly told us watch the media the things they plan in your mind my life so for family members and friends who may be around jocelyn savage who is claiming that she's now engaged to r kelly mm -hmm. how does the deprogramming process work or so is that something a road she will have to walk on her own uh and listen to him deprogramming so now he's telling society she's a programmed robot that she has been with R. Kelly for so long until he took all her senses away from her. Wow. Absolutely. It's going to be something that she is going to need to, to process. And that's, that's going to be a long journey for that, for, for her to go through. And she is definitely going to need a support system to provide um, just support along in that journey. Um, it really is about creating spaces where she can share her um, self, her story in a non- How can she share her story in a non-judgmental way when you have a bunch of people who have now blasted on social media that she is a robot? Detained by the mental abilities of an ex-superstar, disgraced, disgruntled superstar that everyone should dislike. At what area can she express herself? judgmental way uh, and really being able to respond in things like I believe you and, and support is available if she chooses to share her violence. Um, wow, if she chooses to share her violence, what if there were no violence? What if there was no violence? And she's the very one in 40 years that's going to say everything that happened in that house and how it all went down. I'm going to stop right there. I cannot hear any more. I can't hear any more of it. You know, right now, the difference between failure and success 
within family and stranger imprints is the philosophical premise. What does family mean? What does friends mean? What does business mean? Should we merge it with caution? This is why we should merge our family life. You know, yes, if you are being domestically violenced against or human trafficked against or abused or verbally abused or financially abused, absolutely. You have to learn to cut the ties. But if you are in love and you feel that everything that this man has done for you has been the best thing in your life, then you keep going, Joycelyn. You do not allow another person to take the love that you have for your man away from you because they feel you should feel a certain way. That is mental abuse. That is mental abuse. Let's look at this. Let's look at what mental abuse is when it comes down to, to life, when it comes down to, you know, what is mental abuse? The meaning of mental abuse is when you undermine your self-esteem and make you feel worse about yourself. So they're making Joycelyn feel worse about herself because she chooses to love someone that they feel she shouldn't. It is also a form of manipulation and control. The very words that she used, she was doing it subliminally in that conversation by using R. Kelly's scenario to get people to understand the processes behind abuse, domestic violence, and human trafficking, but they're doing it totally wrong. They're doing it wrong. If a person is not, if a person, ah, the effects of mental abuse are just as detrimental as the effects of physical abuse. Yes, it lasts long. It does. And so mental abuse is going to look like threats, verbal insults, and other subtle tactics to control a person's way of thinking. And this form of abuse is especially disturbing because it's tailored to destroy the self-esteem and confidence and undermine a personal sense of reality or competence. And that's why they're taking her voice away. They're muting Joycelyn Savage just as they have muted Robert Sylvester Kelly, can't we see it? Can't we see it? The, the three examples of mental abuse is when, and it can range from bullying, which they actually did without Joycelyn even being in the interview. They used her and made her silent and put another white woman with gray and black hair in her place to speak on behalf of a brown or black woman in the culture of America that she has no clue how to relate to. Withholding kind words, nagging, passive aggressive backhanded compliments, that's narcissism, verbal abuse and mental manipulation. She has never told us that R. Kelly has ever disrespected her in any way, shape, or form. And to continue to love this man even beyond when he has nothing shows her loyalty because she can love him through the pain. She can love his pain away. She can do all the things that no other woman was capable of doing because they were so painfully broken until they couldn't do anything but slaughter him. Hurt people hurt people. And when you can't make a person better, then it's time for you to leave. Not leave when you have taken 85% of what they have earned for themselves and leave them hopeless and helpless. That right there is narcissistic behavior. When someone has realized they are a victim of mental abuse, some decide to stay, while others develop unhealthy methods to deal with the trauma. That's what she's trying to say. These people have manipulated these words in the narcissistic uh, uh, um, community to be anything and everything. Even a parent who tells their child, no, you're not going to do this. You're not going to play football because there's too much trauma in the physicalness of playing football. So just because you're African-American does not mean that you can 
that you have to be a football player. Go learn engineering. Go learn business development. Go learn uh, um, scientific advancements. Go learn in, uh, um, um, history or science. Go learn something other than what we have been used to having to put up with because society told us this is where you make a million dollars. This is how you become a millionaire. Play football, play basketball, tear your rotator cuff, break your knees down. So when we're older, we can just bam a bat on your knee and tell you to go sit down. And now you're handicapped in America. Oh my God. You're talking about the trauma. Now let's look at the differences between mental and emotional abuse. Many toxic tactics of psychological abuse are also classified as emotional abuse and vice versa. Many of us are emotionally abused before we ever realize we're traumatically addicted to anything, whether it's sex, whether it's pornography, whether it's, it's control and anger, whether it's overeating, whether it's drugs and alcohol. However, the distinguishing factor between the two is psychological abuse is stronger, has stronger effects than a victim's mental capacity. Oh, wait a minute. Between, the, however, the distinguishing factor between the two is psychological abusees stronger effects on a victim's mental capacity, while emotional abuse affects what people feel psychologically abuse effects and what people think okay i'm not too sure about that i don't really believe that i believe that emotional abuse is just that it's humiliation it's emotional blackmail it's gaslighting invasions of property and privacy okay um that's emotional um psychological now when you talk about psychological abuse um the psyche is being manipulated more um, it's more of a, a mental abuse of neglect. So we know the differences. And I don't think Joycelyn Savage is showing any signs of those. I just believe that we have a society who is trying to learn how to control the mindsets of their, their members. And so with that, I just want you to meditate on this and um, encourage yourself to agree with what you believe, not what the hype of society is saying, not with what the bloggers on YouTube are talking about relating to, you know, things that are not even factual, not even what a court system is showing you. This is the signs of the Bible that is coming to fulfill itself. There will be news that will, you won't know if it's true or false. You won't know because society is trying to mask the ability to think for yourselves because in the 5G world, we have this ability. In the fifth generation of technology, we have the ability to understand what is being, the, the world is ours at our fingertips and we can touch it at any moment. So have faith with that. And the difference again and failure and success between family and stranger imprints are the phil philosophical premises of family, friends, and business. And we should merge all of them and we should merge them with confidence. You know, um, brainstorm on some of these ideas that you're hearing. You know, why is Boosie uh, stopped by the police now? You know? I didn't really see him doing anything or saying anything about R. Kelly before all this. Is that even fake news? Is that something to get people to buy more of his records now? Because he has a deal under the table with, you know, Universal now or whatever streaming company is there. I mean, think people, think about why these people are turning so close to the R. Kelly opportunity. You even have Country Wayne singing his music in his skits now, you know, I mean, when a woman's fed up, you know, look at what happened between, you know, um, his, his girl and, uh, Mike and Amber, you know, look at all of them and see how the whole play and downfall of the king of R and B is being projected even in his skits. 
I mean, I see it. I look at Judge Mathis and I see that everything that they're talking about with the court is what um, with individuals who were having issues in the 90s. So, you know, I just feel that we have to we have to make the, the truest methods of self-worth in what we believe and don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for it because it's not worth it. It's really not. Well, thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. And as always, you know, I hope that you have gotten something out of this. Um, there's nothing really to report right this moment. I really don't do, you know, uh, um, the smaller um, things like jury selections for Don Russell or, you know, anything that's not pertaining to R. Kelly um, in a bigger way that will make it worth talking about. I'm just not trying to get likes or clicks or any of that. I just want to give the truest knowledge that is most understandable here on our Kelly Appeal TV. So again, we appreciate you. We bless you. Thank you all for being here and you have a wonderful night. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.